I am Tankfish, and I'm wondering when the Pope is gonna call for the next crusade. It's been like 700 years. Today we're playing Lionhearts, which is basically if the Third Crusade was a fanfiction written by a drunk Hoi 4 player on methamphetamines. What if the final boss of the crusade, Ayubid Sultanate, is the weakest of all factions, and had their capital Damascus taken by the Cyprus Rebellion, who were supposed to be rebelling against Dick I of England for whooping their ass and taking their little island? What if? the Teutonic Knights and Templars received Order 66 from the Pope and took French and English cities which resulted in the French and the English forming an alliance with the Arabs to retaliate. What if Sultan Saladin thought it was funny to always attack when the Christians are having their mass? What if the Chaos Legion took Jerusalem? Well, there's no what ifs because in this game, all that shit's happened in the span of two weeks. It's absolutely hilarious. Good game, 10 out of 10. Oh my god! Alright, current quests. Find your father downstairs. Oh, I thought he was still at the supermarket. Buy milk. Hello, dad. I see you have woken up late again. It's 4 p.m., dad. It's not that late. You should go on a pilgrimage. I'm tired of seeing your sorry ass. Dad, are you kicking me out? You are old enough to find work on your own, my son. You cannot stay on this farm forever. Dad, I want to stay in the basement and play Fortnite. You must find something out in the world to bring your prosperity. That will be much more than you will find here. Holy shit. He's actually kicking me out. No, dad, please, I'll help out. I'll do the dishes. We don't need your bitch ass on the farm. <laughs> and so my dad kicked me out of the house and told me to see the village lord who absolutely hates my guts. Of course, I can hate him too. I always in his front yard when no one is looking. He asked me to go in a really sus underground dungeon to retrieve some artifact. And I agreed, because I was gonna shove it up my ass and sh** it out before giving it to him. So I went to the dungeon, weep style, shanked some guys who tried to rape me, got the artifact, tried to shove it up my ass. It doesn't fit, so I went out. What the f***? He got sh** himself. I was away in the dungeon for like five minutes, came out, and this sh** happened. What the f***? There was the village lord, he was dying. So I went and told him to go f*** himself and that I was actually the guy who keeps shitting in his front yard. Then I hurried back to my house to find my mom and dad, who got brutally murdered. So I screamed, Oh look, guess it's my house now, dad! I'm gonna Take stay in the basement and play Fortnite, what are you gonna do? Kick me out? Oh wait, no you can't! <laughs> the guy who killed them left their sword in their gut. Why? Swords in 13th century are quite expensive and you don't just leave it there after shanking someone. Anyways, I had to escape the village and it took 10 minutes for my singular brain cell to figure out where I should be going. Then I see another sus guy, so I went to shank him. Got my ass handed to me, so I did a little bit of a tactical retreat. Then I got to the port where I met my uncle, who was like, Oh, your dad died. I'm sobbing, really. Then we fled to Sicily, where he told me to go to Messina to meet him. I had no idea where Messina is, so I asked him if he could take me to Messina. No. Okay, uncle. And so I had to use the skill I have learned back when I was a demon slayer in Demonfall, walking for a really long time. Then I got to this cart dude who could take me to Messina. He got stuck in the critical air. So I had to kill myself, resurrect after three days at the dock and oh, walk all shit. the way back again. Eventually I got to Messina and my uncle was like, Oh sh**, I didn't expect you make it. I mean, this was a test. If you couldn't, then you probably not gonna survive anyways. Bruh. Then I asked him what to do next. Now he was like, uh, I don't f***ing know. Oh sh**. Insert cash or select. First, I tried to start a mercenary clan with the boys, then I realized that I'm f***ing broke. The food was like, Just go on to the Discord and beg for a job. So we did, and we got our first job offer. We got rated 5 stars. We do anything for money. Then comes our second job. The Teutonic Knights wanted to hire us to fight. For the grace of the might of the Lord, for the home of the Holy, he's the most Okay, wait. Fuck <laughs> Yes, this Wolf. I like Greek yogurt. This Wolf. And then the guy we were beating came in my Discord DMs, told me he's gonna pay double if we switch side. Uh, sorry, can't do that. Oh Allah, the Almighty, Allah. Usually, when the Chaos Legion raid a game, we first send in the least brain dead of the Legion, aka the elites, to learn to play the game so they can teach the other dumbasses how to play later. This allows us to rapidly expand our military, identify possible enemies, you know, all that good stuff, but we skip this phase in this raid because I forgot. 
So I won a little bit something like this. Sniper hired me, I took his money, then I just told him, yeah, go ahead and feel free to draft people from Chaos Legion, I'm leaving the training in your hands, and I'm just gonna go over there and play Demon Fall. And I never showed myself again, for a month. Now before the preparation phase, Ayubid Sultanate did not have any territories and was the last faction in ranking. After a month, when I suddenly remembered about lying hard while I was taking a sh**, I quickly DM'd Sniper asking about the current situation. Apparently while I was busy breathing and shanking demons, a whole f***ing season of Game of Thrones happened in the game. Sniper took over the entire Central Levant, brought Ayubid Sultanate to number one ranking, booted the Cypress out to Northern Levant and took all their cities which made them scared shitless. The Cypress, to have peace, resorted to have a political marriage with mother f***ing Altair, or whoever the f*** was in charge of the assassins. Because of this, Ayubid stopped chasing after the Cypress, because nobody wants to fight the mother with hidden blades who jumped down seven-story buildings and stab people in broad daylight. Then Sniper went and started pissing off the Christians by continuously attacking the Teutonic Order. He did it under the pretense of liberating the Zangrid under the tyrannical rule of the German knights. But he kind of liberated a little bit too hard and took all the sh** that the Teutons had. Then he began raiding holy masses for shits and giggles. And that's when the f***ing Pope had enough of his shits and launched a goddamn crusade on his bitch ass. Sniper then proceeded to get absolutely f***ing annihilated by the coalition. So yeah, you know that the preparation phase is usually supposed to be calm and uneventful? Like, nothing is actually supposed to happen here. Not some crack-ass novel written by George R. R. Martin on LSD. What the f***? So, almost nobody got trained, everybody hates us, we got no cities, and Sniper f***ing overpin so no one wants to play the game. Because of this, we rally a f**k all compared to our usual rallies. It was so sad that every time we raid I would go in my closet and cry a little bit. But I was optimistic, so we launched some skirmish attacks on our enemies. Turns out, people who play Lionheart never, never seen, seen grass. grass. They've grinded their ass off and got these Damascus steel sword that Thanos snap your HP mm. in half. And all we got are those arsenic f***ing toothpick toy swords that deal 15 damage because you know no one wants to grind basically if we don't outnumber them at least two to one there's no chance for us to win now the server limit is 120 they can usually rally at least around 50 people it means that it's impossible mathematically to outnumber them two to one due to the server player limit but i was still sort of optimistic i had a plan while i was molding in my closet if we're having trouble fighting them what if we just don't fight them at all what if we just fill up the server before before they could even react so they couldn't join. Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. The goal is simple, fill that bitch up before people realize about our shenanigans. First we have to make sure they don't know about the rally, because if they do, they can simply rally before us and screw the whole operation up. That means at everyone, Lionheart's raid tomorrow at 3pm EST in the announcement is a no-go. Cause they've got spies in our discord, they think they're slick. Instead I only announced the date of the operation to the most trusted members of the legion, and told the commanders to secretly smuggle small groups of soldiers into central Levant under the pretense of game night or other events before the raid. What seemed like a quick game of Rick Remastered is in fact a covert operation intended to move an army without detection. Thanks to this, we managed to rally 110 people right under their nose. Oh god. Oh god. This is terrifying. <laughs> Here's how you get more men power, you just get a few women. <laughs> <laughs> this left no time for the crusaders to react, then we just took everything. I mean, there weren't any big fights. The most resistance we have encountered was three random unfortunate knights who alerted the horde and got immediately overrun. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. It was quite boring actually, and people wanted more blood. Tank fish, are we allowed to eat them? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so we went to Southern Levant. Uh... I'm gone, I'm gone. Our enemies were waiting for us there. I don't know why, because we never wanted to go there. And there were a lot of people who were just there to watch the show, eating popcorns and shit. So that server was filled up. There were like 70 people. So we just came in there, fought for like five minutes, then retreated back to Central Levant because half our army couldn't fit in. And they thought they won. They thought they repelled the horde. So they just 
elephant started to celebrate. So we came back and we f***ed their shit up. Then they realized mm. we we're back and they were like, oh shit, it's not over yet. So they came back to defend, but it was too late because our whole army is there. However, we quickly hit a roadblock while trying to capture the city of Jericho. You see, we spawn all the way here. Jericho is all the way here. It literally takes like three minutes of walk for us to get to Jericho. Also, some of my guys started to leave because it literally has been two hours and their mom is calling them to dinner. So because of all this, they managed to hold us off. I needed to do something quick. And it was at that moment that the spirit of Sun Tzu whispered in my ear. A war is based on deception. So I told Sniper to lead a small group of people to initiate a siege on Nicosia. Of course, it was a distraction. We weren't actually gonna siege Nicosia. We're gonna stay here and let them teleport to Nicosia and fight nothing. So when the teleport thing popped out, we did this. No, everyone click no. Everybody click Let's say click yes. Let's say <laughs> so they all thought we were going to Nicosia and they accepted the teleport, leaving the city pretty much empty and we just walked in and took it. And trust me, they were more than confused when they saw no one attacking Nicosia. It was hilarious. And then I hear Sun Tzu whispering again. The captured soldiers should be kindly treated and kept. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. So while the English and their allies were fighting nothing at Nicosia, we took all their garrisons. Then one of my commanders was like, hey, Tank, you want to take Jerusalem? Do I want to take Jerusalem? Of course I want to f***ing take Jerusalem. So we siege Jerusalem. There's two part in there. There's the outpost battle and there's the siege. The outpost battle was pretty simple. You just go in the middle and you camp the tower. Only the shield campers stay there. The rest yeah, only the shield campers stay there. The shield camper is a vital part of our strategy. The shield camper division. The shield camping division. So we pretty much just steamrolled them with our number. The siege, however, is another story. The city of Jerusalem's layout is about as confusing as quantum physics and both has given me brain aneurysm. We walked through the gate and it was acid if we stepped into limbo. Got absolutely no idea where to go. It's like first time at airport. Go to B, they said. But where is B? B is on top of that big tower. Which one? Took us a good 10 minutes to figure out where the f*** everything is. And once that happened, we won. Or so we thought. Because apparently, they threw the siege battle. The admin saw us running around like a bunch of confused tourists and got worried. He was like, oh sh if he lose the battle, he might not upload the video. And I really, really need that video for advertisement. Because game about to die. To clarify our primary goal, which is the central of one has already been taken. Jerusalem is just like a cherry on top, I guess. So I didn't care, but they thought it was the end of the world. So basically what I mean is God is literally on our side. So God won in our enemy's leader's DM and told him to not win because they is non volt. So they threw and then they complain in general. Ah, oh, we let you win. Look, man, anything goes in war, including blackmailing God unintentionally or not. I mean, since the community did put up a good fight and literally called a crusade on my ass for good sportsman's sake, let's call the siege of Jerusalem a draw. Since we technically didn't win, but technically didn't lose neither. And trust me, I'm equally pissed as I'll never know the true outcome. So GG, no re. And that'll be the end of the video. Subscribe, like, and comment E, or I will force the Pope to call the 10th crusade on your ass. Sniper, say the prayers. <laughs>